We've seen how easy it is to predict the form of the ECG readout in two of the chest leads, V1 and V6. If you know the position of each of the 12 leads of the ECG relative to the heart, you can carry out a similar analysis in all 12 leads and build a predicted ECG. Learning the position of the leads of a standard ECG relative to the heart is not as difficult as it sounds, and as we'll see later, pays dividends in clinical practice. Consider the 12 leads in two groups of six. With the six chest leads, also referred to as the precordial leads, examining the heart in the horizontal plane, and a second group of six leads which examine the heart in the vertical plane. We will first deal with the horizontal group, the precordial or chest leads. These six leads, V1 to V6, are placed on the surface of the chest wall in an arc from V1 in the fort right intercostal space to the right of the sternum to lead V2 in the fort left intercostal space to the left of the sternum and then at roughly equal intervals to lead V6 in the fifth left intercostal space in the mid axillary line. These six chest leads examine the heart in the horizontal plane. In order to understand their view of cardiac electrical activity, we need to remind you of the position of the heart in the chest cavity. Let's examine a horizontal section of the chest taken at the level of the chest leads. As illustrated in this section through the thorax, the heart is positioned such that the right and left atria sit behind the ventricles at the back of the chest. Furthermore, the organ is rotated towards the left so that the right ventricle lies anterior to the left immediately behind the sternum. The six chest leads V1 to V6 examine the heart in this horizontal plane. Therefore V1 and V2 face the anterior surface of the right ventricle. V3 and V4 look at the anterior surface of the left ventricle while V5 and V6 look at the lateral surface of the left ventricle. Modern machines present the printed ECG readout landscaped on an A4 piece of paper and the signal from each of the chest leads is recorded on the left hand side of this A4 ECG readout in numerical order as shown here. The remaining six ECG leads we can consider in two groups. The standard leads, leads 1, 2 and 3 and the augmented leads, AVR, AVL and AVF. This vertical plane is known in anatomical terms as the frontal plane. To remember the position of all six of the vertical leads relative to the heart, use lead one as your reference point. Lead one looks directly at the heart from the patient's left hand side and defines zero degrees in all further discussions of the frontal leads. Lead two looks at the heart at an angle 60 degrees further clockwise while lead 3 is positioned a further 60 degrees clockwise from lead 2. These angles will become important in the next section of this course. The readout from the standard leads, leads 1, 2 and 3, are recorded down the right hand side of the ECG paper as shown here. We are now left with three further vertical leads to remember. The augmented leads, AVR, AVL and AVF. AVL looks at the heart from the left. L is for left but at 30 degrees anti-clockwise, or more to the left if you like, from lead V1. AVR looks at the right side of the heart, R is for right, and just like AVL, it is 30 degrees above the horizontal relative to lead 1. As AVL and AVR are set at 30 degrees off the horizontal plane, you can think of them as the left and right wings, or wings, of the ECG. AVF looks straight up at the inferior surface of the heart and is therefore at 90 degrees clockwise from lead 1. Think of AVF as looking straight up at the heart from the feet. F is for On feet. the ECG readout, recordings from the augmented leads are positioned between the standard leads and the chest leads, from AVR to AVL and down to AVF at the foot of the page. Combining our knowledge of the positions of the ECG leads relative to the heart with the simple electrical rules outlined so far, we can generate a predicted normal ECG, and here we have it. 
a normal 12 lead ECG showing a recording of two beats from leads 1, 2 and 3, two beats from AVL, AVR and AVF and two beats from each of the chest leads V1 to V6. Note also the long run of recording from lead 2 at the bottom of the readout. This is the rhythm strip and we will come back to its role shortly. For the experienced practitioner, looking at different areas on this A4 piece of paper is like looking at different anatomical regions of the heart. On this 3D model of the heart, note how three of the vertical leads, 2, 3 and AVF, form a group examining the inferior or diaphragmatic surface of the ventricles, a region supplied by the right coronary artery. You will eventually get into the habit of seeing these so-called inferior leads as a single entity in the bottom right-hand corner of the ECG. The chest leads V1 to V4 examine the anterior surface of the ventricles and the septum, a region supplied by the left anterior descending artery, while leads 1, AVL, V5 and V6 examine the left lateral aspect of the left ventricle, a region supplied by the left circumflex artery. In a subsequent section of this course, we'll see the key role these groupings of leads play in diagnosing myocardial infarction and in identifying the vessel obstructed in this condition. There is a lot to try and remember in this video, but as you'll see when we go on to diagnose heart attacks and serious pathology, the perspective of the individual leads on cardiac electrical activity is well worth knowing. We will try and reinforce your knowledge of lead positions in the test material at the end of this section.